So thank you very much for joining my presentation. And my name is Shintaro Momose from NEC Corporation Japan. And today, NEC provides our, our strategy with our D-Wave. And the second part, part of this presentation uh, will be the material microstructure modeling with our D-Wave machine, on the D-Wave machine. And this part is uh, will be provided by CSIRO Australia, uh, Mr. Yang. And uh, this is uh, my presentation agenda. So first, uh, uh, I would like to introduce the uh, NEC's strategy collaborating with D-Wave. And second half of this presentation, it's the uh, CSIRO and the NEC joint research uh, by using the D-Wave Leap, and which is uh, 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 talking about the material microstructure modeling. So let's move on to the collaboration between D-Wave and NEC. So from 2020, uh, D-Wave and NEC having their uh, strong partnership. And the uh, main collaborations are, uh, first one is uh, joint promotion and market development uh, together with D-Wave. And the second point is NEC is resetting uh, D-Wave leap with Japanese language support. So this is very important point for Japanese customers uh, by supported our uh, native language. And the third point is the uh, quantum computing education service uh, with D-Wave. Uh, we are providing such kind of service to uh, enhance our users uh, with D-Wave. And here I'd like to uh, introduce uh, D-Wave and the NEC portfolio and the collaboration. So uh, D-Wave and NEC go to market together by uh, already available quantum computing technologies for practical use. So this is very important point for our business, uh, both D-Wave and NEC. And also the HPC is expecting acceleration by uh, com combining quantum computing technology to our high performance computing technology. So this figure shows the quantum computing and the HPC status. So uh, annealing our own classical computer. So NEC is having the vector annealer. And uh, annealing own quantum computer, this is a real quantum computer and DF is providing leap as you know. So these two products are from NEC point of view. These two products already available for uh, practical use. So this is the reason why NEC is focusing uh, to provide the annealers on classical computer and their own quantum computer to, to the customer. And uh, as for the quantum gate type, so gate type on classical computer is quantum gate simulator. However, it, it's uh, still around the phase from NEC point of view. And also the quantum gate type on quantum computer is a quantum gate computer. And this is also uh, around the phase and difficult to apply the uh, practical use or practical issues. So from the HPC point of view, uh, HPC or supercomputing on classical computer, it's the Pure HPC, pure supercomputing. So NEC is having the six or Aurora Tsubasa uh, vector supercomputer. Also, uh, sometimes x86 clusters or sometimes GPGPU cluster NEC is providing. And uh, uh, HPC, not on quantum computer, uh, but with quantum computer. This is a uh, hybrid computing between uh, supercomputer and quantum computer. And this is kind of the uh, hot topic. Uh, and the HPC uh, side is expecting uh, to be accelerated by uh, combining quantum computer. So NEC and D-Wave continuously discuss uh, this kind of acceleration uh, to the future. Okay, so here I'd like to introduce the why NEC is focusing on quantum computing. So both HPC and the quantum technologies will be used for higher sustained performance uh, to the future. And the uh, second point is NEC is providing D-Wave Leap and uh, vector annealing, which is the simulated annealer and the uh, supercomputer uh, developed by NEC. So uh, this figure shows the 
uh, kind of timeline and uh, expected sustained performance of the system. So now we are standing here, uh, end of 2022, and now NEC is having the supercomputer. Uh, this is the SXO Rura Tsubasa and the vector annealing, simulated annealing working on our supercomputer. And also we are setting the quantum annealing from D-Wave. So this is our uh, first step. And we are going to second step. So second step is uh, combining uh, HPC technology and the quantum computing technology in order to provide much higher sustained performance. So this is the second step for our NEC. And we are discussing or we are collaborating uh, with D-Wave. And uh, around 2030, uh, quantum gate computer uh, will be commercially available. However, the first version is NISQ, NISC. This is a noisy intermediate scale quantum computer and the uh, uh, result includes uh, error or noise. So difficult to, due to this error, uh, this NISC type quantum gate computer uh, difficult to replace today's computer or supercomputer due to the noise. And uh, around here, uh, 2050, uh, for the tolerant quantum computer, FTQC will be commercially available. This is the expectation. So this FTQC perfectly avoids the noise from the result. So this FTQC quantum gate computer can, uh, will be able to replace the, today's computer or supercomputer. However, 2050 is a bit far from today. So this is the reason why NEC is focusing on to the uh, supercomputer and uh, simulated annealer and the quantum annealer to apply the uh, uh, pra practical uh, issues or practical use cases. Okay, so here I'd like to introduce the, uh, one example uh, with a Japanese university, use case with Japanese university. And this is a real-time tsunami disaster simulation and real-time prop proposing optimal evacuation route uh, from the tsunami disaster. So at first, the earthquake is occurred somewhere. Uh, around Japan, there are a lot of big earthquakes. So the earthquake information is inputted to supercomputer in order to simulate the tsunami. And after the tsunami result is uh, outputted, uh, the result is also inputted to disaster simulator. And finally, supercomputer provides the, uh, some kind of disaster result. And the result is inputted to uh, Anira, like as the DF leap. So the Anira provides the uh, evacuation route to each people. Uh, for example, the from here to evacuate to here uh, by considering the uh, sometimes the bridge is broken or sometimes the too many people are concentrating to uh, same bridge or like that. This is just an example. And uh, NEC is focusing to develop the, uh, this uh, market by uh, simulated annealer and quantum annealer. So advertisement infrastructure and manufacturing, transportation, logistics, financial, material drug uh, development and drug discovery. And uh, our uh, <clears throat> Product is the D wave and the uh, simulated annealer are from NEC and also the uh, verify applicability in field site and the hands on seminar, also the uh, development of human resource. This is also the very important. And uh, if you have uh, some interest or question or some comment, uh, please contact NEC and the uh, NEC's website or these. So from now on, uh, CSIRO and the NEC would like to introduce the result of joint research. And uh, Ms. Yan uh, will provide the uh, <coughs> research result as a, our second half of the presentation. Thank you very much. Before I start, I would like to thank the T-Wave systems for organizing such an excellent conference, our AEC collaborators for arranging a joint presentation. The last Qubits conference in 2021, the DVU systems training course and the training materials, 
and the webinars have been very helpful for our applied quantum modeling effort in CSIRO. The title of my presentation is on material microstructure structure modeling with quantum modeling. This is an attempt to solve material microstructure structure modeling problems on 3D lattices with quantum modeling. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to give an overview of material mark structure modeling, data constraint modeling of DCM, quantum annealing computation on DCM subvolumes, quantum annealing computation efficiency and challenges, and finally, the takeaway messages. My name is Sam Yang, Principal Research Scientist in CSIO Australia. This work is in collaboration with our NEC colleagues David Garvin, Akio Todasan, Kazushi Maru Kawasan, and uh, Michael Ho, and uh, also our CSO colleagues Peter Tyson, Clement Chu, Tony Murphy, Manolo Per, Jim Rebel and uh, Fennel Donia. Let's get to the topic of material microstructures. When we're talking about materials, there are basically two types. One is manufactured materials, another one is natural materials. An example of a manufactured material is 3D printed metal components. On top right of this slide, it is a 3D printed titanium bracket. You know, manufactured metal components, its internal microstructure, manufacturing process, its multi physics properties, and the performance for its intended function are all interconnected. An example of Natural materials include mineral ores and oil and gas reservoir rocks. Example of their property is a microscopic porosity distribution. Their connectivity is, will have uh, the influence on fluid transport and for oil and gas, this is related to the oil and gas recovery. A common technique for sample non-destructive or SND 3D microstructure characterization is X-ray CT imaging and the associated image segmentation and analysis. The technique generally have a limited spatial dynamical range of 1,000. That is, the resolution or the pixel size is order of one thousandth of the component size. Such as, if the component size is one centimeter, the resolution is, is order of 10 microns. This is quite often inadequate since there may be finer structures. So the solution to the problem is actually use an XVCT data and the physical model to work together. And uh, the answer is data constraint modeling or DCM that will be detailed in the next slide. Move on to DCM for lattice style material mark structure modeling. DCM is abbreviation for data constraint modeling. For more information, you can visit our website at research.cso.au slash DCM or do a Google keyword search on data constraint modeling. It is a method for determining the 3D distribution of materials with accuracy CT scans and statistical physics. Mathematically, it is minimized objective function T. The parameters include capital N, it is the total number of voxels, 
and small n is a sequential number for vox each voxel. Mu is uh, actually CT linear absorption coefficient, and E is energy. The energy includes self energy S and the interaction energy I. The minimization or the optimization is to minimize the difference between observed and modeled X-ray linear absorption and uh, the energy distribution. Typical size of problem is uh, n in order of 1k cubed for academic problems, or n the order of 10, 4k cubed for industrial problems. The classical computing challenge include conversion to local minimum rather than global minimum that that is uh, converged to a good solution rather than the best solution. Another challenge is the computational efficiency because there are billions of voxels for a material sample. We try to answer the question, would uh, quantum manili be a good answer in the future? As currently there are a limited number of qubits in a quantum manila, the problem is divided into subvolumes for implementation. A subvolume problem is impressed as an Eisen spin glass or cube format for implementation. <clears throat> and reformulated, the objective function is expressed as a coupling term that is with J as a coupling and H, and H as a uh, the field term for the linear term. Now a demonstration of quantum manilian computing on DCM subvolumes. The problem was implemented on the D-Wave systems quantum manila with the ocean tools. We tested with XVCT datasets for SIP sandstone as well as random images. The subvolume size we have tested range from 5 to 12 cubed and the SIPS is abbreviation of calcite in situ precipitation system. It is a lab synthesized sandstone. In the image, the top line is the original XVCT data or the XVCT grayscale images and the bottom line is a DCM segmented um, images that include the voxel to voxel interactions. Now about uh, quantum manilian computational efficiency and the challenges. We have observed that the QPU time is sensitive to the embedding chain lens. For the previous uh, the DCM problem with quadratic coupling, the best result is obtained with a chain length of two. It would be nice to be able to embed a 3D neighboring lattice style problem with a chain length of one as a potential option for the, to the solution. And uh, now a question to our D-Wave systems and expert, is it possible to have the click rather than the by-click QPU topology for more efficient embedding? We have also observed that the QPU time increased exponentially with number of voxels, and of course this is proportional to number of qubits for lattice style problems. On the right side, this is our test result for the, the simplified DCM problem without coupling. And uh, you can see that uh, the success percentage versus the number of qubits is decreasing exponentially. Um, and uh, another limitation is the limited number of qubits in advantage quantum manila restrict the subvolume size to practically to the order of 10 cubed. 
hopefully this will be increased uh, substantially with the development of uh, the hardware. Finally, the takeaway messages. The quantitative knowledge for microstructure is important for both manufactured and naturally occurring materials. Data country modeling or DCM can be formulated as a 3D lattice style optimization problem for investigating material microstructures. Quantum annealing is promising to solve the simplified DCM subvolume problems. Challenges include limited number of qubits and computational speed. Potential hybrid computations include BQM and CQM is to be investigated. Thank you for your attention.